This is seriously the third day in a row, pretty much, we're talking about this player. Jonathan Berggren of the Detroit Red Wings is no more. He is now back down to the Grand Rapids Griffins. Take a look at the post made by Detroit on Twitter. The Red Wings today assigned right-wing Jonathan Berggren to the AHL's Griffins, and this was a really interesting piece of news. Mostly because this is fine, but I wanted to talk more so about the reaction, the response. You could see there are 99,000 views on this tweet and 84 responses. And I'll tell you this, a lot of Red Wings fans about this situation, yeah, they're not happy. Here's the top reply from Das Haas. I'd request out of Detroit if I was him. It's infuriating to be better than half the NHL forwards on this team and still get sent down. Mind-boggling stuff. Then, of course, you have yourselves the Grind Line guys. Shout out to y'all on the Grind Line show for talking about, yeah, he's already rumored in trade talks. But what exactly is the reason that this is happening? Why are people getting pissed off about this? Well, let's just talk about the profile first. Once more, again, he's a right wing guy, small ish player, 23 years old, now up to four points in seven Red Wings games. He is also a point per game with the Grand Rapids Griffins. If you take a look at Berggren and his stint with the Wings that just wrapped up, he had three games played and three points. Two goals, one assist, he scored against the Dallas Stars in the 6-3 loss, he scored against the Blues in the 6-4 win, and he had an assist on the only Red Wings goal scored against the Carolina Hurricanes last night. The Wings lost this game 2-1, to one, and look, Michael Rasmussen has been on the heater too. Good to see him getting on the board, but of course, Jonathan Berggren getting the assist is partly what we care about as well. There is the two goals and two assists for Berggren. Of course, the other goal that he scored came in his earlier stint. But a lot of people are talking about why this is a bad thing. There's a big response as to why this is terrible. Here is the Red Wings sub. Three points in three of his games. I don't really know what else they want him to do. It really worries me the idea that he's in the block because I really want to keep Johnny Burgers. Here is another reply. Ken Holland is going to trade for him, put him on McDavid's line, and he's going to average a point per game for the back half of the year. I'd bet money off of it. Now, of course, that's just kind of a joke of a comment, but there are a bunch of other people going out there and saying, yeah, I don't like this as much as everyone else, but is there a clear spot that he should be taking over somebody currently in the mix? We can't waste him on the fourth line. Why aren't we allowed to have four lines that can score? And that's part of the reason, too. You take a look at Berggren and his production the past little while. Sure, the three points in three games is great, but he's averaged about nine minutes of time on ice per game in this stint. Nine minutes against Carolina, ten against St. Louis, and then 8.30 against the Dallas Stars. You might be going out there and saying to yourself, hey, what would happen if you gave Berggren more ice time? Like, how much more production would he get if he was getting, let's say, 15 minutes of time on ice rather than nine? Give this guy spots on the power play. How does that go out? And realistically, there's a lot to be loved about when it comes to Berggren and his profile, but the reason that people shouldn't really be going out there and being worried isn't really being illuminated either. And that's right here. You go up into the comment section. The first comment on the Reddit post of Berggren getting sent back is that JT Comfer should be back next game. Okay, there you go. That's part of the reason why. Here's another reply that explains it even further. I hate it, Minky goes out there and says. The number one reply to this comment says this from Matt Minderbinder. It should be noted high in this thread that the call-ups that we had seen, Berggren, Czar, Zarnik, they were on an emergency basis. It didn't matter what Berggren did during the stretch, he has to be sent down when the emergency conditions end. With Comfer and Costan coming off the IR, two guys had to be sent back and will probably keep a center through the weekend for center depth replacement for Larkin. These are roster rules that had to be fulfilled. People can put away their pitchforks at least for a day or three. And then, yeah, the comments make a lot of other comments here look silly. This comment section is full of people who would no doubt assemble a Stanley Cup winner every year. Really, it's a shame that ownership doesn't hire all of these commenters on Reddit as advisors or GMs of critical team roles. We absolutely would be better off if these guys in the Reddit comments were calling the shots. Now, there also is a conversation asked about waiver exemption because these emergency call-up games would indeed count towards the exemption status. 
Per the hockey writers, any NHL game played will count towards the total games played when determining waiver eligibility. So this goes out there and puts a little bit of a dent in Berggren's waiver status. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is still a very talented player. And we had been seeing this put on display the past few games. You don't go out there in such limited ice time and get the amount of points that Berggren has without having something to your game. Now, at least, we'll see Bergen going back down to the AHL, Grand Rapids Griffins, and hopefully actually find a better production rate. Not even that his production this previous stint was bad. I mean, a point per game in the AHL is definitely great. But now that he's got a little bit more of an NHL mindset instilled within his game from this season, I mean, there's a lot more to be gained here. If the best case scenario plays itself out, Bergen goes out here and dominates, he absolutely tears apart the AHL. Maybe he gets yet another call-up, and maybe he's good enough to the point where he's given even more minutes beyond nine per game, and then maybe the Wings decide to keep him. Who really knows? We've seen a lot of commenters in the comment section of our videos, as well as on the subreddit, just saying that, yeah, Berggren is a great player. We don't need to trade this guy. We shouldn't trade this guy away. If anything, there are a bunch of other bodies on the Red Wings that you could send away for other stuff instead. But as we had talked about in the video leading up to this entire conversation, this is a really good player. So if the Wings are thinking about trading him, they're probably going to be getting a lot of stuff in return. Like, there is no reason for Steve Eiserman to consider trading away a 23-year-old young guy who had 28 points in 67 games played last year in the NHL for nothing. Don't send this guy off for just an extra draft pick or something unless that draft pick is a first round pick. And it includes a bunch of other stuff too. Maybe there's a defender involved. Maybe there is another young piece. We had already talked about the idea of the Montreal Canadiens getting involved in Jonathan Berggren and his services because he fits their timeline. There are some extra defensemen on the Montreal Canadiens that you could say are young enough to actually bode significant impacts long term. Let's go over to the Canadiens and look at their roster. But when it comes to the guys here, let's see if we can see roster. Yes, this is what we want to see because age is very well displayed here. Justin Barron is 22 years old. Caden Gooley's 21. Jordan Harris is the main guy that I'd been seeing tossed around there. 23 years old. Even Kovacevic is 26. Lindstrom, of course, is 25, but the Wings aren't going to be trading for him. And then everybody else, I mean, Jaden Strubel is 22 years old. If you go over to the Laval Rocket, there are even more guys that are like this. Let's see if we can find a shortcut to doing so. Let's go to Struble. We'll go down to the AHL and see that Laval Rocket. Here you go. Let's talk about young defenders on the Rocket here. Who's actually good enough to mention? Logan Mayu, Matthias Norlander, William Trudeau, Arbor Shakai is down here. Yeah, so extra names you could toss out as potential trade fodder for a Bergeron swap. But of course, for Stevie Y and the Red Wings, it really just depends on what their values are. And look, the guys who are running the Red Wings, they're not the same Reddit commenters that are going out there and talking about this stuff. But uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Detroit Red Wings sending Jonathan Berggren down to the AHL. In my opinion, this is not that bad of a deal because it was kind of necessary. He had to get sent down once the emergency conditions on the team got fulfilled. And that's exactly what happened with the returns of other guys into the lineup. Costan, Comfer, they're probably going to be back. So the guys that got called up in emergency are going to have to get sent down. It's not an indictment against Jonathan Berggren that he is getting sent down. He was really good. It's just he has to be. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about the Bergeron situation in Detroit. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99. And bye.